Yo, what's up film fans? Epic Film Guy Justin here, rolling solo tonight. My partner Nick is at his best friend Bill Sutton's bachelor party, living it up. And I'm sure he had a much better time than I did tonight while I viewed the Jonathan Liebsman directed, Michael Bay produced, yes, Michael Bay produced, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reboot. Now, I was in the spear earlier tonight to wear this mask that I got from the theater with my showing for the entire review. But you know what? After I saw the film that I witnessed tonight, I am no longer in the mood for turtle power. Okay, I will get right into this quick review. And by the way, Nick will be doing his own short review after he sees the film this weekend. But this film was horrible. Yes, I'm sure you already read about it. It's all over the net. Every critic has written about this. Most reviewers have already pointed out how bad this film is. Um, you know, to start off right with the basic story of the movie is so generic that it's really hard to get over anything. I mean, the opening scene where you actually witness the first time you see a Ninja Turtle, which is Raphael, spoiler alert, is almost like they stole it right from the Batman Begins playbook. Um, it... As you go through the film, you notice that there's not much motive for either the heroes or the villains in this movie. It literally is just generic. We're heroes. We're villains. We're going to go through the motions, and we're going to have little action scenes, some of which, mind you, aren't even that great for a Michael Bay-produced film. I was not impressed here at all whatsoever by any action scenes here. Um, it just goes through... The regular motions of what you would see for a generic action type movie in this day and age. Um, the tone is one thing that I wanted to get off immediately. I said before to many people, I was optimistic about this film, that if they could get the tone right for this, if they could get the characters and the turtles right, and what makes them work as uh, you know a team of brothers, it's a brotherhood, that's what makes it work. Um, that I would be okay with the movie, no matter how much action and mindless nothingness it would be. Guess what? They didn't even get that right. I mean, the tone, it tries. It tries very hard to be what it thinks it wants to be. But in the end, it comes out just being more mindless than mindless can be. Um, you know, we saw this summer, we saw Maleficent, which is one of the worst reviewed films we did this summer, and Transformers Age of Extinction. I can't rate this any better than Age of Extinction, and that was the worst film I saw all summer. This is probably close to being that bad for me, um, if not worse, because I actually care more about Ninja Turtles than I care about Transformers as characters. Um, these are living, breathing characters that we grew up with. We love them. You know, they're all individual and they all have their own personalities and they show a little bit here. Now, as far as how they're voiced, it's kind of hit or miss for me. I really liked Raphael, um, but he's kind of underused. Knoxville as Leonardo did not feel like a leader. He just did not stand out to me as being the leader that I know and love from the cartoons, the comics, and the original films. Uh, Michelangelo actually, really actually not annoying. Like, you think he would be from the trailers, but he's not. He's actually kind of fun, um, and he has some of the best parts of the movie, the best jokes, which most of them do fall flat, but the laughs that are there are from him. Donatello is sporting a new hipsterish kind of nerdy look and sound to his voice it takes a while to get used to but it is Donatello at heart and what's there works um huge major fail here is the casting of Tony Shalhoub as the voice of Splinter bad horrible he does not do it justice it's very very flat underused and to go from that and to other characters and their development shredder is the worst developed villain i have seen in any film mind you a franchise type picture or, or comic book movie ever literally you don't hear anything about Oroku Saki, Himato Yoshi there's nothing there to develop these characters shredder just is and he is to be whatever he wants to be. And he literally is what a Transformers type villain would be. He's all CGI. All he does is beat up the turtles. And there's no motive. 
There's no character. There's nothing behind what makes him do what he does, or what makes him who he is, like the original films, the cartoon, and the comics. Everything you've seen before this, as far as Turtles-wise, Shredder has motivation. Even if it's corny or stupid or convoluted, here there's nothing. There literally is nothing that makes Shredder want to be Shredder. The film starts, he's already wearing the suit, he is what he is. There's no development to why he is what he is. Um, and that's the same thing that we'll get into, and this is a spoiler alert for you guys. The Turtles are what they are because April O'Neil's father and William Fitchner's character, which, guess what? He's not the Shredder, um, or Baxter Stockman, mind you. They are trying to find an anti mutagen or a cure for some type of disease, which they never even mention. And they use these four turtles, which April O'Neil actually names herself and marks their colors on their shells and feeds them pizza when they're baby turtles and names them all, including Splinter. She saves their lives when there's this huge catastrophe when William Fitchner's character actually turns into this bad guy and decides to blow it up. You know, 15, 16 years later, now we have these giant hulking turtles that can do everything they can do because this is the worst part. They learn martial arts. They learn nujitsu because Splinter, as a mutated rat in the sewers, finds a book. A book that slips through the sewer and then he looks at it and he learns from that. And then he teaches the turtles. No real backstory of anything Japanese or anything as far as martial arts. It's all just thrown in there. You're feeling what I'm feeling, I'm sure, if you're a big fan. Uh, it, we knew that they weren't going to be aliens because they got rid of that out of the script. This thing had so many rewrites, you can just tell right from the get-go that they had a problem with this script and it shows majorly more than any other movie i've seen in a long time it's a mess nothing in it works except for a couple a couple of jokes um literally um i'll move on because i'm short on time here uh score horrible generic another one of these uh han zimmer ripoff scores trying to be heroic and it fails there's no Tension, there's no suspense, there's no build-up, it's just all flat. It doesn't accent the film at all. It, it really just, that made me kind of upset. As soon as the film starts, you hear the score. That makes a movie for some of us. And as soon as I heard it, nope, didn't work. Uh, I can't say enough how much I disliked this movie. I almost hated this movie. I wanted to walk out more than once. I took two bathroom breaks, actually, and I never do that during a movie. It's bad. If you're a Ninja Turtles fan and you find something redeeming about this, please message me personally or get a hold of us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash epicfilmguys, because I want to know what you liked about the movie. Um, the plot, as far as the villain motivation, straight up taken from Amazing Spider-Man 1. You take the whole city, and we'll take over the city. Generic enough for you? Really? Like, we didn't see that the past 25 years in comic book films. I, I cannot say enough how I hope that this fails, and they don't make any more uh, of this series. I feel bad for Jonathan Liebesman because I actually liked what he did in Battle of Los Angeles. Um, the fact that Michael Bay was involved here, I hate to say it, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Many of you told me that I was wrong, and I hoped that I wasn't. I'm wrong. Him being involved ruined this. And I'll get on this right before I make my rating. Megan Fox. You'll be surprised here. Not the worst thing about the film, but she's not April O'Neil at all. She does not make the character. She does not know how to really invoke any kind of personality to her or really give her what makes April April. She's just kind of flat, but she's not horrible. Not the worst performance I've seen. Will Arnett, wasted, falls flat. All of his comedy in the movie is bad. I'm sorry. I will watch this for the rest of my life. All three of these, including the third film, which I do not like or enjoy at all. But I will watch this instead of this CG-filled, 
nonsense. And I'm sorry. And I love everything. I, I give everything a shot. I came into this with an open mind, and this film was horrible. My epic film guy rating for the new Jonathan Liebsman, Michael Bay produced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle film is a 4 out of 10. I give all the actors credit for what they did, the production, the CGI, and, you know, the guys with the mocap suits, I, I commend you. You did a great job with what you did. The motion in the movie, so much was done well. This could have been such a great film. Could have been great. The right team behind it, the right script, the right production team. This literally could have been the best Ninja Turtles movie we ever had. There's points in this movie that are really fun, really great, but they're, they're few to none compared to the bad things. I guarantee you, I hate to predict this, but I guarantee you that my partner will not give this any much, any better than I just did. So, here you go. To those of you that enjoyed it, get a hold of us, let us know why. I pretty much hated the film. Epic film guy here, Justin. No, Nick. Get a hold of us at facebook.com slash epic film guys and our YouTube page, www.youtube.com slash epic film guys and why. And I want to thank our sponsors, Tricky Gold Marinade and Upstate Merch. Have a good night, guys. And Ninja Rap. Live it, love it, breathe it, bleed it. That's where it's at, boys. Get a hold of it.